Good evening, I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show. I welcome Mary Kissel, my colleague and co-host and friend, to return to the studio after several weeks and Mary on the road. I'm very pleased to have her here because we have a lot of politics going on. Mary, a very good evening to you. Hi, John. It's great to be back. We have news from Fox Business Channel with, with the Wall Street Journal that will sponsor the next Republican debate. Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Tuesday night, the 10th, and we will have Mary Kissel to consider. How <laughs> yeah. so, Mary? Fun. I'm going to be with uh, Stuart Varney on Fox Business between sometime between 5 and 6. It might be the whole hour. Before the undercard. Before the undercard. We're right. going to talk politics, politics, politics. Politics is much in the storyline tonight because uh, the polls have made a decision. So says Fox Business. The large field is now two less on the senior and two less on the junior. The governors have departed, and that might be a theme here. Governor Christie and Governor Huckabee have been asked to step to the undercard and will not appear on the main stage, the one where Trump is in the middle frowning. Governor Mataki and Governor Gilmore, Governor Mataki of New York and Governor Gilmore of Virginia, have been asked to find another venue they will not be on the undercard. So, four governors depart. I don't know if that's a theme, Mary, uh, because there are sufficient governors left, Governor Kasich, Governor Bush, for example, to mean that the governors are still in the senior mix. Do you read in any fashion this this winnowing as uh, a guideline, or is it just the luck of the draw? I don't like this winnowing before voters actually go to the polls, John, because if you look at the polls, very few voters have made up their mind, and that makes sense. We're a full right, year right. away from the election. Gra- Granite, po- Granite uh, State poll says only 20% of the people in New Hampshire believe they've d- 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 determined their candidate. Right, and, and 19% of that 20% will probably change their mind right. again sometime in the next year. Uh, but I'd also note that uh, Senator Lindsey Graham didn't qualify for either debate, and that makes me sad because Oh, Lindsey Graham's out of the undercard? Yeah, it says oh, here, I, South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham I just saw Gilmore and Pataki. All right, yeah, Lindsey Graham's so, out as well. So that's, that's and he's the wittiest person on the campaign trail. <laughs> he sure is. But he's not just witty, he also brings something to the debates, which is a foreign policy expertise right. that very, very few of those other candidates have. Marco Rubio is very articulate, but he certainly doesn't have the policy Policy experience and the and the breadth of knowledge that Senator Graham has on foreign I, I policy. I regret uh, Senator Graham's departure because he had a specialty, uh, particularly in the news right now, given foreign policy, the reported bomb over the Sinai. We move to politics, however, in America because you reported with uh, within these last days the governorship of Kentucky, a surprise win for Matt Bevan, a businessman. The surprise is that he was supposed to lose. In fact, I remember reading reports, uh, his obituaries on Monday night. And (laughs) then suddenly, uh, without an explanation that I've read yet, he won by nine points over the Democrat. Is there a story here? I think there's a big story here. Matt Bevan, remember, challenged uh, now major- uh, the head of the Senate, Mitch McConnell, in the primary, and he ran kind of a very amateurish, uh, almost insulting race against Mr. McConnell. Pr- pranksterish. Oh, it really terrible yeah. um, amateur stuff. So then he decides to run for governor, and, and everyone pretty much writes him off because of how terribly run that pattern last campaign was and he spent his time i learned from you complaining right that's how he campaigned right and yet he won it's like a teenager so how do we learn from right this? so he won and he won by a large margin right. 53 to 44 uh, what we learn is a couple of things number one don't trust the polls which is an important lesson especially right now especially as we talk about how the polls are influencing who the american public gets to hear on the national stage for the presidential race secondly uh, uh matt bevan ran against obamacare And as we've seen repeatedly in the last several election cycles, if you run against Obamacare, you win because it's never been popular. And despite what the mainstream media or the New York Times in particular want you to think, 
Uh, it's never had majority support, never had Republican support. And when people see their pocketbooks getting hit and hit significantly, John, my, my health care costs went up enormously this year. I just got the renewal information. I croaked. The failure of Obamacare is staggeringly broad, staggeringly broad. Well, it's in, in it's it's several different kinds of, of right. failures. The co-ops are going. The co-ops are, are, are going out the of rates, business. The, rates, the rates are going up. Your networks are shrinking. Your deductibles are going up. Up and and people are, are not. Going up. Uh, people are not uh, filling out their income tax forms. People who had subsidies, perhaps because they're complicated, perhaps because they're gaming the system. In other words, the IRS is now in an enforcement mode because people have gone missing. The signups are falling well short of even yeah, HHS's and, and, reduced. And, and, Ambition. And the IT security for that right. very private information being shared amongst all of these agencies. Otherwise, things are working well. Oh, it's a great We're, time. I yeah. want to met the st- stats in my head, Mara. Since the Affordable Care Act was passed in March of 2010, 16 members of the U.S. Senate, 69 members of the U.S. House of Representatives, over 900 legislative seats across America, both houses of Congress, that's enough, have moved from the Democratic side to the Republican side. Historic swings. The Affordable Care Act is the greatest tool the Republican Party ever came up with. <laughs> Absolutely. I think you should really credit this president and Nancy Pelosi for coming up a, with it. A gift that uh, the Republicans could never hope But to. at such a great human cost, John. I appreciate that. I'm really looking at politics here. One more detail. And, and, and this is about upcoming politics by the Democratic Party. You talk to Joe Rago, member of the editorial board, our colleague, and you talk to him about the up, expected climate change summit, many headlines coming up in Europe. The president's going to be there, I believe. The Chinese president will be there in any event. And before this announcement, we had several weeks ago, the president ballyhooing an agreement when he was in Beijing with Xi Jinping. They were looking to reduce greenhouse emissions by 2030. And then Joe reports that suddenly China has raised its, raised its allowable emissions from coal to the equivalent of 70% of all coal in the United States. <laughs> yes, they have. Um, they changed, the, they changed well, the rules. For such a climate change evangelist, President Obama certainly has not struck any meaningful deals with China. In fact, remember the original China uh, uh, climate change summit that the president attended in Copenhagen? Well, th- was that when Mrs. Clinton claims they went looking for That's the right. Chinese? That's right. They went room When, in to fact, they have been uninvited? Correct. Yes, when the Chinese right. pulled one over on them. Right. So the and reason, they did it again. Then they did it again. They did it again. They made promises and then they changed the game. And they just changed the game. But Joe's point, which is is important to remember, is that autocratic countries are the world's worst polluters. There's no check on the behavior of those state-run energy industries. Uh, and developing countries are the dirtiest countries. So what you want is for countries like China to become democracies and rich and prosperous so that their citizens have the ability to elect people and to demand cleaner air and cleaner water so that there's accountability, so there's a civil society. None of those things exist in China today. In fact, Joe taught me a term. I have to look it up later. Uh, carbon intensity. Mm. Carbon intensity means how much energy, how much bang you get out of one measure it carbon thing. And dictatorships have very low carbon intensity. Not and, efficient. And the United States has a very high carbon intensity. And so this climate conference that's coming up in Europe is already compromised by the greatest coal polluter emitter of all, it's a China. Dead, it's a dead letter. And we can expect the president to address this? No. We can expect this on the headlines that China just bailed out, China betrayed the president's trust? Well, we, we reported it in the Wall Street Journal. Mary Kissel, the editorial board of the Wall Street Journal. We've done our politics, the Republican field anticipating Kissel's remarks on Fox <laughs> Business prior to that. And Mary, you'll be with me afterwards. Yes, I certainly uh, will. Later on, after the debates, Mary will join to comment on the debates without Governor Christie and without Governor Huckabee on the main stage. I'm John Batchelor. This is The John Batchelor Show. <laughs>